Hey guys, what's up? As promised, I'm about to demonstrate to you a watercolor wash technique, which is going to be the background for our Mindy hands, right? Um, so first of all, you'll notice I'm on this tiny little piece of watercolor paper on a pad here. I got home today, I'm at home in scenic Red Bank, New Jersey, and um, I realized that I thought I had bigger watercolor paper, I didn't. So I'm going to demonstrate on this tiny little piece. You guys, of course, are going to be working with a larger piece of background. It should be okay. I can still show and tell you what you need to do. So here's my watercolor palette. Um, very first thing you always do with watercolors when you open up your watercolor palette and they're dry as a bone is you want to take a few drops of water and wet each color. So I'm putting like a little tiny, little tiny puddle of water. You may not be able to see it on the video, but a puddle of water in the color there, in that purple, and I want to let that soak in for several minutes. I, most of these I've done already. Some of them um, was a little few minutes ago, so I'll re-wet a little bit here. So with each color you think you want to use, you want to put a few drops, a little puddle of water um, in each color because that's going to rehydrate that dry paint, and it's going to make a th uh, like a thick paste of color, which is the basis for all watercolors. Um, so watercolors are always about, excuse me, about how how much or how little water you use on your paper, controlling the amount of water on your painting. Um, and to do that, you got to start with a thick, rich paste of color. So that's hopefully what we have going on here. So a wash. Um, oh, let me say this about the water. This is nice, clean. It's a little, little reddish maybe, but it's clean enough to work with. Dirty water, psh, not good. Um, as soon as your water gets dirty, as soon as you feel like you need to change it, don't be lazy about changing your water when you're working because dirty water directly affects what happens on your project, needless to say. Um, so uh, if your water gets anything that looks a little dark color or grayish or brown sludgy, change it because it's going to affect the way your painting looks, guys. Also, this thing here, this piece of paper towel, this is your buddy's, it's real handy. Have a piece of paper towel um, in your hand or next to you while you're working. It works for, it helps, very helpful for a few different things. I'll show you in a couple minutes here. So let's start. Watercolor wash works like this. Um, it involves painting your paper, the area you're gonna do the washing with, clean water first and then adding color. When you guys do this, you're gonna practice first, right, on a separate piece of paper. Maybe it's a big piece, whatever. Uh, when you're in class, I'm going to give you watercolor paper. If you don't, we can talk about how you can get some. Um, I'm, a, I'm on a small piece, but I'm still going to work in just little sections as, and practice. When you do your actual project, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to paint it in sections, not the whole thing at one time, but I'll get into that in a minute. So, watercolor wash, this is what happens. Clean water on my brush. I'm going to paint a section, not too big with clean water. I'm trying to get it pretty wet. I'm not trying to make a lake of water here, a big puddle, but I'm, I'm getting it pretty wet. And then right away, the next thing I'm gonna do is take my paper towel, I'm gonna to get that excess water off my brush. This is a good idea because if it's too wet and I go to grab some of that thick, rich color, it, it makes it, it thins it out too much. So I'm gonna dry my brush, it's still damp, and I'm gonna grab some of this, what is this, teal, blue? I'm gonna start putting on some blue here. And notice I'm just dropping it on there. I'm just touching my brush, the corner of this flat brush onto the paper. And grab a little more, add a little more. And I'm thinking, well, hey, what color goes with that? Of course, green goes with blue, right? So I'm gonna throw on some green. Now, this, the way it looks now is will change after a minute or two. It'll start to soften up and spread out a little. And I can, you know, my blobs of paint can be bigger. I don't have to make tiny little dots. It's, it's, there's no right or wrong with how you paint the color on a wash. The, um, the steps though, as far as painting your clean, your paper with clean water first are what's important, changing your water. So that's one way of doing it. It's kind of cool. Um, if you have more water, let me, I was talking while the water was sitting there. Watercolor paper is made to absorb water. So let me try to show you, let's see, let's see what happens there if I'm not I'm talking. Paper towel, right? If I grab it right away, look what happens. It pretty much cleaned it off. Um, it, you can blot excess water with paper towel. You can wipe your brush like I just showed you. Paper towel is your friend, guys. So I'm going to put some bluish water on here which is all right. 
for because I'm going to use the same colors. If you're using the same colors, it's one thing. If you're changing colors and your water's dirty, that's bad news. And I'm going to grab some of this, uh, that same color. I'm going to blop. Look what it's doing now. If you can see, um, it's spreading out. It's kind of looks like, I don't know, sort of a tie dye type thing. Grab a little green there and blop it on. It spreads out because I had a little more water on. This is what I just was talking about. Watercolors are all about how much water or how little water you use, depending on what you want it to look like. Um, so that's one way of doing the wash, right? Clean water first and then um, touching the paper with your brush with, with color on it. Another way of doing it is this. Let me get this paint off of here. Let's see. This water is almost ready to be changed, but I'm still going to work. I'm not going to keep going here. Another way of doing it is clean, clean water first. Wash is always clean water on paper first, always. No matter how you put the paint on, you always paint your paper with clean water first. Um, and I can grab maybe a little orange here, and I can start stroking it across. If I feel like there's too much color, I'm like, oh my God, that's way too much paint. I can wipe some paint off my brush, get some of that pigment off, and just start moving it around some more. And then um, I'm gonna grab a little yellow here, work some yellow. There's also yellow orange in the palette, I believe. All right, let's try some of that. And um, it's, it's sort of a blendy, I'm working horizontally. I'm going across like this. And I'm using two colors, actually red, red, orange, I think I've grabbed, and some yellow. And I'm just kind of painting a sunset looking streaky thing. And that's great, beautiful background for hands, right? Black and white Mendy hands on top of that would look nice, very nice. Another way of doing it, lastly, is a gradation. You guys might know it as an ombre. Let me flip this over and try to use the back if I may. Aiden, ladies and gentlemen, this is my son Aiden. Say hi, Aiden. Um, I'm going to try to do similar to what I just did. Similar. I'm going to paint a section with clean water. And rather than just kind of streak all colors together, I'm going to try to work with uh, changing, fading from one color to another. So I'm going to grab some of this magenta. I'm going to paint it. Notice it's streaky, like there's darker and lighter spots. It's totally fine. We like that. It gives it character. It looks nice. I'm going to grab some of this bluish, dark blue, and I'm going to try to make them kind of work together there and blend. Um, one thing you can do with watercolors, you can add water, and you will see that um, when, when you do that, you may be kind of like oh i thought the paint would move around more it really doesn't move the paint around if you add water after you add color what it does is soften up what's already there so i kind of got a blendy ombre thing going on there a little bit and once you have something that looks good with with whatever this with these with these techniques whatever stop you don't want to try to keep working it and the more you try to work it and work it, chances are it's just going to go downhill. Um, so uh, once you have something that looks cool, you stop. You don't try to do an overkill on it. That's something that we uh, people make. It's a very common mistake in watercolors to try to keep going. And make It's not looking so good, so you want to make it look better. Sometimes with watercolors, you just kind of got to roll with it, you know. And and if, if you got an area that you're not quite as happy with as another area... It's okay. On your, all right, I'm going to stop in a sec, but on your final, um, remember, you're going to be gluing down hands. So if you have an area where you drop some water, you got some uh, different color, you know, don't forget, you can probably cover up some, uh, some mistakes when you glue down your hands. Let me just say this. This is important um, before I stop the video. So on your big, this, pretend this is your big sheet of watercolor paper and you're ready to do your background. You are not going to paint the whole thing with clean water first. Oops. And then try to add color. If you do, if you paint your whole big paper with clean water first, by the time you get a third or a half away done, the water down here is going to be soaked in already and it's not going to do what you want it to do. So we always work in sections. If you want to do, say, for instance, the first thing I showed you, that drop thing where I'm touching the color to the paper after I paint it with clean water, you do that one section at a time. You paint a section with clean water, add your color right next to it, and joining with it, you would paint another section with clean water, 
add your color, and so on and so forth. So you, you kind of build it in sections till your whole paper is done. Same with the other techniques I showed you too. If you want to do that sunset-y thing or your streaky horizontal, you just do it one section at a time and they'll, they'll join together um, with wet paper and it'll kind of all come together in the end. Again, do not paint. Try to do your whole paper at once with clean water. It doesn't work. All right, so that's it. I hope that helps, and I'll be, of course, helping you guys and answering questions in class. Thanks, guys. Bye.